Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. James chapter 2. My brethren, save Jews, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Clicks. Don't be faithful. Don't be a Christian to Jesus Christ. We talked about faith in chapter 1. We're going to talk about more faith. But, you know what? It's simple what the verse says. With respect to person. And we're going to talk about rich and, and poor again. But, you know, no Christian should favor any other Christians out of a group of Christians. When you're of one particular church, you're supposed to be one family. For if there come unto your assembly, how about that? How about that word for a church? Your assembly. A man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment. So there's two people that come to church, come to your your group. One man that's rich and he's got great clothes, and one man he's dirt poor. Rags, vile, maybe they stink. Now, is that a comparison of a chart from one end to the other end of the scale? There's no happy medium. The only happy medium are the Christians. But there's this well groomed man come, and here's this bump. Maybe look on the streets. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing. That's not sodomite gay. That's, you know, it's bright, it's cheerful, it's good looking. The English language has deteriorated over the years. And say unto him, the man that is rich, sit thou here in a good place. And say to the poor, the one that has the vile raiment, stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Wow, how rude. The rich man, hey, come over here, sit. Right here, sit with us. You stand. Well, if you want to sit, sit under the chair. Sit at my feet. I need to prop my feet up on something. Serve me. Bow down before me. Are ye not then partial in yourselves? Are you become judges of evil thoughts? Yeah. Hearken, my beloved brethren. Hath not God chosen the poor? Let's see. Born in a manger? A carpenter family? How about four fishermen? Now, I'm not sure about the carpenter family. I mean... They weren't rich. I would think being born and laying in a manger of an animal stall, I think that would probably stink. Maybe. If not, I know four fishermen would stink. I grew up with lobstermen. And pretty much it's the same as fishermen. Whew, they stink. They're the roughest kind of group of people. They all carry a knife, an old fishing knife. They're not afraid to use it. 
rough, tough people. This is not the kind of people that you would want to be walking into your bank. Uh oh, what are they going to want? You don't want them to come walking into your great, fabulous church building, reeking. You, know, you wouldn't want a farmer come into your. I mean, he may smell like cow poo poo. Oh, I can't have that. We gotta have the rich. Has not God chosen the poor of this world? I'm nobody important. God chose me. But I am rich about one thing rich in faith. That's one thing. Now, again, this is not everybody. But more so, people that are rich are not going to turn to God. They're going to trust in their riches. There's a few. Broad is the way that leads to destruction and, and narrow is the way that leads to life. So broad would be the way of rich people. They're not going to trust God. But there are exceptions. And those that are poor and meek and, and have need and have to ask God for something, they're the ones going to trust God and put their faith. The rich Pharisees, the uppity ups of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John rejected Jesus Christ. The, the, you know, those sinners, those publicans, they're the ones that hang around with Jesus Christ. And they were getting upset. What are you doing with those people? Rich in faith. If you don't have any riches in your life, let it be rich of faith towards God. That will get you crowns and rewards at the day of reckoning, at the judgment. And heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to them that love him. Well, that's interesting because let's go back to chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Here's a crown. Now here is a, a right to the heir of the kingdom to those that love God. Oh, I'm just saved. I'm going to heaven. I don't care. You don't love God. You're not going to get a crown, and you're not going to get an inheritance. And when it comes time down to the real factionalities of life, you're going to probably deny Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is not going to deny your salvation. He's going to deny your right to reign. Within time, we'll show you who you love. Do you love God, or do you love any, anything else? But Notice the love how it shows up twice. But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you. Now let's look at the Jews, what's going on in 60 AD. The religious folks, the rich folks of Jerusalem, the Jews, have delivered Jesus over to Herod to crucify him. Throughout the book of Acts, they are going after, Paul was rich. They are going, killing, imprisoning, confiscating, bringing Christians back to Jerusalem to be tried. Do not rich men oppress you. Yes, Christians. And draw you before the judgment seat, the book of Acts. Why are you in favor of these people that hate you? That's the question. Do not they blaspheme the worthy name by which ye are called? See, now they're saved. Shows they're saved. All right? They hate the name of Jesus Christ. Why are you friends with them? Why are you protecting them? Why do you give them the time in what? Your assembly. They are coming to you. And you are giving them place, and they don't want to have anything to do with Jesus Christ. But the poor are coming, and you're not giving them the time. Looks like they're turning away lost souls. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But, if you have respect to persons, if ye have respect to persons, clicks, rich or poor, 
ye commit sin. This is a New Testament teaching on this side of Calvary to Jews who are saved. You sin when you give particular de deed or merit to somebody because of status. It is a sin. I haven't heard that sin preaching churches in a while. Long time. And are convinced of the law as transgressors. You're guilty. Now, James is writing to the Christian. He says, For if there come unto your assembly a, a man of gold, it looks like he's blasting his own people in the church, in the group. In the assembly, listen, when you're in Jerusalem, you're not going to start a church building. <laughs> Because the Pharisees and Sadducees would know exactly where you are. The Roman government will know exactly where you are. The Bible says you're meeting house to house and wherever you can meet where they can't find you. Underground church through the book of Acts. You wouldn't dare build a church building. And when you gather together, here you are showing favoritism. And that favoritism is sin. And there are people in the assembly of churches today who are completely left out because they're not already in crew. Well, that in crew, you're sinning. And are convinced of the law as transgressors. How's that? And whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet offendeth in one point, he is guilty of all. I never killed anybody. Have you ever told a lie, a false report? Well, yeah. Well, that's one of the Ten Commandments. You are now guilty of them all. Oh, I love my parents. Have you ever looked upon a woman lust after her in your heart? Well, you, well, yeah. That's adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You are now guilty of the entire law. You ever want to have fun with a Jew's laws? You're outside his house. You knock on his door. Say, excuse me, sir. James, I know they won't listen, but James chapter 2, verse... Uh, 10 you have a battlement around your roof that's a, like a little gate around your roof so no one would fall but, oh no I don't have that the law says you need a battlement around it now you're guilty of all the law I don't care what you do you're guilty of all the law one point miss of the law now see we are taking the Jews back to the law because they're Jews that's what they were saved from but you know what these rich people are under the law. They're not under grace. They are not saved. And for them, they'd be guilty of the whole thing. But you, you're guilty of sin. You know what sin is. For he that said, do not commit adultery. Said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, oh, I've never committed adultery. Yet, if thou kill, what has the rich people been doing in the book of Acts? What did Paul do? What did they do to Stephen, which is current events at the writing of James? Did they kill him? So James has taken current events and brought it to these people. Listen, these people that you adore and love and give time and play, they killed your brethren. They are guilty of the law because they are unsaved. What are you doing? You become traitors. Even Judas went to the wrong side. Thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, say, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. See, we're under the law of liberty. You can do whatever you want, you're saying. I advise you not to. But those people, they violated the whole law. We're under liberty, but guess what? You have sinned. 
for he shall have judgment without mercy. Those that are lost. That he has showed no mercy, and mercy rejoices against judgment. Listen, those people were killing Christians, and they, they just killing them, brut brutality. They didn't give Stephen a chance. That's their major sin. You know what your sin is? Your favoritism. So go ahead, say murder is bad. Oh, adulterers, God shall judge. Have you shown any favoritism? You are now a sinner. Ooh. Same chapter, James chapter 2. See, there is no degree of sin. All sin is sin. For the Lamb of God take away the sin of the world. So, paragraph. What does it profit? My brethren, what's a profit? Though a man say he has faith and has not works, uh oh, can faith save him? Now we're getting to another dirty subject here. And this part of James here, Martin Luther hated. Because a Roman Catholic priest would run from 14 to 19 and 20 to say, Well, see, works will save you. This is where a Roman Catholic Church will say, You got to pray to Mary, you got to light candles, you got to go in a little prayer book, you got to do this, you got to do Hail Mary, you got to. But let's read the Bible. So, he that has faith, I've got faith. I'm a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. I believe Jesus Christ died for my sins. And have no, not works. Can faith save him? Alright, let's have an example. If a brother or sister. So, we are talking to Christians in James. And the example here is somebody destitute of daily food. They don't have no food. They are, huh? Or clothing. They are a brother or sister in the Lord. Say, say Brother Stanley, can I give those people outside of Walmart money for food or clothing? Are they your brother or sister in the Lord? Now, let me ask you a question. If a brother or sister is naked or destitute of daily food, doesn't that sound like the person that's coming to your assembly that has these, 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 these vain clothing? Seems like we brought the poor person back into the assembly. They're saved. The ones you put off and say, get off my, my, my seat and get under my feet. I don't know if the two go and out because, because we're on a new subject here. We're talking about faith and works. But so here's a brother, he's, he's naked and destitute of daily food. And one of you saved, say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? All right, here comes somebody in the church. They got no clothes. Fall and winter's coming. They are hungry. They ain't got no much food. You walk to them and say, hey, go be warm and let your tummy be filled. Have a good day. Bye. What good is that going to do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. They're not going to profit. So even so, faith. Got to get this. If it has not works, is dead being alone. Now notice, faith comes always before works. With the heart man believes unto righteousness, you are saved. You're not saved by your works, you are saved by your faith. 
All right. So, I've got faith, but I don't do nothing as a Christian. I don't read my Bible. I don't go to church. I don't witness. I don't. I don't do nothing. But I'm a Christian. And because you lack works, I don't care who you are. I have the right to say to you, I doubt your faith and you're dead. I have that right, according to James. What do you do as a Christian? Well, I don't do nothing. I don't care if you can tell me how to be saved. I don't care if you can quote the chapters in the verse. If you're not doing anything, you're dead. Now, if you're truly saved, that's between you and God. But as far as your life itself, here's someone who needs food and, and clothing, and you go, go, it ain't going to do you no good. It ain't going to do them no good. So being dead alone, yea, a man may say, verse 14, the old man say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. Uh-oh, we got a problem, James. James has told you that if you got faith, you, you love the Lord and you want to do right. We just saw love in chapter 1. We just saw love in chapter 2. Your faith that God has put the Holy Spirit in you, the Comforter in you, Christ being you, and you become a child of God, God becomes your Father by the true faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, what he has finished for us upon our sins. You will do something. And he believed. And he trusted. Show me thy faith. Oh, wait. You have a man say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. It's action packed in your mouth, in the works. Thou believes that there is one God. Many people will profess that. Thou doest well. That's okay. You believe there's a God? Hey. He's in this. He's in that. Or, you know, there's a God this. The devils also believe and tremble, yet no devil or devils are going to heaven. That's another example. Belief and faith and needs works. That thief on the cross, he believed that Jesus Christ is God, is his payment for sin sent by God. His faith and his works that he trusted Jesus Christ was going to do what Jesus said. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Okay, Lord. There was no there was no back talk. There was no no more lessons. See you in a little while. But wilt thou know, O vain man, empty man, doesn't know nothing, that faith without works is dead. So when you look at somebody who claims faith, you as a living person without the full knowledge of God, because I am not God. When it comes to a man's salvation, there are three beings that know your salvation. There is God, there is Satan, and there is the person. Of assurance of salvation to know that you're saved, God, Satan, and the devil, God, Satan, and you know. But when I am to look at you, and when I am coming to you and I am a witness for Christ with the gospel, and I take a look at your life and you say, Well, I'm saved. 
I hear by your comments. I see by your conduct. I see by what you're doing. I can say, oh, yes, okay, wow, surety. Or, no, I don't think so. I don't believe it. A Christian wouldn't be doing what you're doing. A Christian would be rejecting what you're doing. A Christian would not say to a witness what you just said. So I would approach the whole avenue as I'm going to deal with you as a lost man. You may be saved. But your conduct, I will deal with it. You're saved. Wow. Amen. Glory to God. Let's try and lift you up even more. Or by the lack of conduct, let's get back to Calvary. And like I said, the Roman Catholic Church will run this. You have to have, you know, the works for salvation. It's faith. For with the heart man believes on the righteousness. Then works because you are saved. Because you love the Lord. Because he has done things for you. Great things. Was not Abraham our father, James the Hebrew too, Jew, justified by works? When he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar. That's Genesis 22. Again, we run to Genesis 22 as a great example of the Bible. Here it pictures the faith. Hebrews 11. James chapter 2. Not only was there great faith. Hebrews 11. But there was works. He could have told God, yeah, God, I love you. I love you more than my son. Well, take that boy to that mountain, and, and the next morning he could just sat there, Lord, I love you. Well, take that boy. I love you, Lord. Take the boy. I love you. And had he not done nothing, Genesis 22 would not be in the Bible. He had to do something. Offered Isaac his son upon the altar. Seeing, now notice that too, offered his son upon the altar. We know that God stopped that knife. And yet it's still credit to Abraham that he did offer that son. Not physically, but spiritually offered that son because of the faith of Abraham. Seeing thou has faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. So faith without works is dead. Faith and working makes you perfect. And the scripture has fulfilled, the scripture was, was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God. There's the faith. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. So implying with your faith in your works. You are likened to a friend of God. Because you're just like Abraham. You're showing your belief in action. It's a verb. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Read your Bible is a verb. Pray without ceasing is a verb. Comfort one another is a verb. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Now, the Catholics got that mixed. Now, there's another group of people coming up to say, well, only faith will save you without works. The other side of the spectrum. You don't have to do anything. You got to believe. That's doing something. Faith is an action. Faith is a verb. Likewise also, another example. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works. When she, when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. Now when you go back to Rahab and read the story in Joshua. The spies come in their house. She says, listen, we've heard about you guys. We know what your God and Moses has done to all the enemies. And we here in this city, we are frightened. We are scared. But if I help you, will you help me and my family? 
that we can still live. I believe your God is able to take care of me. And the works that she done. By hiding those men. By lying to the king. You know her lie was respected by God. She lied to the rulers of her people. Said, well I don't know. I didn't see them. They went out by some, some gate or that. She had them hidden up in, in the roof. And then when Joshua and the men came, he sent those spies and said, go into that house and grab her family and bring them out. Her faith in the God of the Hebrews and her faith that those men would protect her, she was protected. And she was saved. Literally saved from destruction. When she had received the messengers, the spies, it gives you what the word spies are, the messengers. Because they were going to give Joshua a message. This is what's going on. That's what a spy does. He goes in, he looks around, he, report, he marks down, he takes notice. Then he goes back to his commander and he gives them commander a message. There's so many people here. There's a camp over here. There's, there's gunfire over here. There's swordmen over here. There are horses. He reports. And has sent them out another way, not to be found by the enemy. For as the body without the spirit is dead, another example. So when your spirit leaves your body, you're dead. God made man out of the ground. He put a, a soul in that man and he breathed the, the breath of life into man. And he became a living soul. And when that life comes out of you, now they can give you CPR. They can give you the paddles. You did not die. When that breath comes out of you and it does not return, that moment you die is dead. So faith without works is dead also. You are dead to other people. And we look at you like, I got to call you to question. But in the eyes of God, God in you, no. Again, there are three people that know salvation. God, Satan, and you. And there are people come up to, well, we're Christians. And the comments they make and, and, the, and their attitude they had, really? You're a Christian? And you said that and you're acting like that? That's why we got to be the new creature. That's why we got to grow in the Lord. There was a time when I went door knocking and I was wearing cigarette t-shirts. Someone took me aside and said, hey, you know, that's not proper. I stopped. There are times when I thought gospel tracts were for Christian collecting. And someone pulled me aside and no, it's for giving out. You stop and you grow. Today I get gospel tracts out. Today I try to present myself as, as, as uh, oh, I'm trying to think of their Bible verse, uh, I stay from all appearance of you. I try to look myself look like, do I look like somebody that I should not look like? Do I look like I'm doing something I'm not supposed to be doing? It's our conduct. It's our walk as a Christian. It's how are people seeing you? And they may see, you may profess to be a Christian, and there may be something you're doing. They may look at you, oh, really? Doing that, Really? That's why the Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. Don't give the world any hint to think, really? But then rest assured, we are saved. God knows. We're growing. To the day we are finished in Christ. When we get that new body, we judge all the works that are burnt up, there are wood, hay, or stubble. We get crowns, rewards, inheritance. 